My name is Austin Zentner, and this is the story about how my band, Eternal Requiem, traveled from Texas to Finland to record our album Rise with Children of Bono producer Ansi Kipo at Ostia Studio. Three I'm hours, tired three hours of sleep. And then we sleep four hours, I believe. And then it's uh, almost 6 a.m. in San Antonio, Texas right now. But next time this I see you, it will be what time? 8 a.m.? It will be 8 o'clock in the morning in yeah. Finland. Yes. It's Hopefully. Gonna be, it's going to be a long journey. Hopefully we're going to be alive. We're going to be uh, hardcore guys again. Lots of coffee. Yeah. I stayed up all night. 6 a.m. is my new bedtime ever since I've been working on the songs all night long. And I'm not even tired right now. I'm just ready. <laughs> that, that, that makes one of him. I'm, yep. I'm, I'm ready, but I'm tired. I just need some sleep. If any unknown person to give you any including to transform life, do not accept one million children by 2018. This is truly an amazing accomplishment. Alright well, guys, early in the morning we arrived at Helsinki. We thought we lost our guitars, but uh, we found them. And uh, we're going to look for the train station so we can meet with Ansi Kipo. Nice. How do, you, how do you feel this morning, buddy? Tired, I'm confused. I don't know what time it is really. <laughs> My body doesn't know what time it is. I just want coffee. Alright, let's, let's find some... Uh, a local Helsinki coffee, hopefully. And this is the airport. It's kind of busy this morning. John just tried samiyaki. What do you think about that? Tastes like a cough drop. <laughs> <laughs> I asked Austin to give me like slice of cheese. Look what I gave me. <laughs> it's bigger than my head. <laughs> I've been obsessed with Finnish metal for years. About five years before all this, I was scrolling through the booklets of my favorite CDs, and when it came to Children of Bodom and Insufferum. Ansi Kipo came up repeatedly as the producer, and my thought was, if I could record with him, I might be able to get similar results. I hit him up on Facebook, and he responded, and uh, it turned out to be a dream come true. This is a very important moment. This is the first time three of us just touched the land of Finland. How do you guys feel? It's kind of cold. <laughs> <laughs> it's not as cold as I thought. Oh, yes. man. That smell. And then uh, we would like for you to see. It's uh, 10 o'clock in the morning, I believe, right now. Wait, Look at that wait, snow. Wait, wait. And then we touched the snow. We are officially touched, officially finished snow. Yes. It's cold as balls. But you can see the smoke coming out of my mouth easily. It's pretty nice outside, pretty white. It's beautiful. And then, even though we are metal guys and all, I would like to share this moment with these guys in here. We follow our dreams. We came to Finland, guys. guys we are finally in the town where we're gonna record the album and then this is Ansi <laughs> hi we're so lucky to work with him <laughs> my name is Ansi Kippo and I am the owner of Astia Studios a full analog recording studio in Finland my first impression when Eternal Requiem guys from Texas contacted me about the album was that actually it made me very excited I think it's super cool that people from all around the world fly to me to make some 
very cool albums. And I was also super excited to show these guys from a very hot climate the cold, cold weather of Finland, which affects the Finnish metal bands and kind of helps them to create the music they make. <laughs> When the band asked me to do the album, I think my first reaction was like, yeah, sure. I mean, I was excited, but also thinking that this session actually gonna happen, as it sounded a bit weird. But the studio was booked, and then they started sending me all these songs, and at some point I just realized that I better start working on these songs. The session is gonna happen. Tassa on Tony, one of them. Did I say that right? Yeah. Nice. Perfect. My first session with Ansi was my first album with Mount practice back in maybe 2004. I honestly have no idea how many sessions we've done since. Must be dozens and dozens of albums, EPs, singles, everything from hip hop to black metal. It's so easy to work with Ansi. We met through work and became close friends all the time. We know each other so well that there's almost no need to talk. We do. Even though we are Finns, we still talk at times. Alright guys, it's the first in studio. 6 a.m. Thanks to John woke me up. <laughs> Said we might as well drink coffee then. This is the incredible living room in the studio, as you see. It's time for day one of rehearsal. Right on. Most of the time, that's how I go. Yeah. Hello. Hi. Moi. Better, man. Is that hello, boy? So, you know, moi is like hi. And moi moi is like... Goodbye and moi 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 is coming back. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh really? yeah. well, no. no. <laughs> so much moist. <laughs> Blast! That's the blast. 
I usually say when band first time they enter Astia Studio and have an album session with me, uh, they usually enter the ANSYS Music School first class. And I think the guys graduated great. Uh, it's the same like the Bodum guys, they were like 14, 15 year old when they first came to me and they went through the whole ANSYS School of Music and that has helped them also to become musicians they are today. And it was cool to show the guys a lot of things and we did our best to avoid the mistakes which usually bands on the first or early albums do. <laughs> sounds very thin and kind of <laughs> like this all the time and more you play exactly like guitars more tighter you should play and it's kind of creating problems for them because every note should be exact but then it will take time to get it exact so this will kind of make it sound better and it will be easier to play and you need to pay more attention to drums okay and if i was you i would almost mute the guitars because those guys are way too fast if you listen to them, you are fast too. But if you if you listen to that guy, he's on time. So you will be Most better of off. <laughs> Don't listen to them. Listen, <laughs> listen to yourself, and only, then you will be much better off. You guys suck. <laughs> There's here is the kind of secret. Bass always plays with drums. Mm -hmm. If Tony is not playing, do, 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 then you are not playing. Guitar uh, department is a little bit different because you two are a pair and they are a pair. But bass should not follow the guitar, bass should follow the drums. And when Tony is playing like that, you should kind of keep the constant quarter notes going exactly as the drums are doing, even though guitar has long notes. Otherwise, it will sound like, yeah, the drums are going, but the music is not kind of, it, it's kind of stuck. Might and sound a little bit out of place. Yeah, not many notes were rhythmically correct with drums. Uh oh. <laughs> so you need to pay attention. You need to listen. <laughs> a lot what Tony is doing. Once you get it right, you will hear like, oh, how, how is this music sounding so much more tighter? And that's going to happen. And it's a very pleasant surprise. Since you uh, pointed that out, I went back and listened to the computer demo and I can tell it's way worse than we are now. So. Exactly. Yeah. And during these two weeks, your ear will develop like a light ear compared to what it was a couple of weeks ago. And your playing skills will de kind of de develop a little bit slower. So. First you start hearing the problems and you, uh, you can't do anything about it, but slowly you can. And all this I'm pointing out only because if I don't point it out, you think, oh, we are so great, one take and it's done. No, it takes a lot of work and this is kind of a wake-up call. Kind of I'm grabbing you by the shoulders and shaking, wake up, it's not that good, but it's going to be in the end. You know the groove and all, it has improved in just a day and a half. Yeah. It has improved a lot. That's awesome. It's not something like, whoa, that's the best part I've ever heard in my life. No, it's ba, 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 ba. It's kind of even all the time. But I would like to hear some kind of small hook. But it's, it's better to make, a, for example, one note later, like dun, 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 all. It's something unexpected, and it's like, whoa, but if it's even, it's like, oh, boring, I've heard it on one million songs already. I wrote so nice notes with love, and now they look like this <laughs> after two or three years. <laughs>
¿Qué pasó? Where'd you go? Where'd you go, bro? Going to Austin Studio. You It's went, here. You went the wrong way. Look at that face. I'll put the microphone. Mm -hmm. That is the face you make when you eat yogurt. Even though we play metal and all, you still need to get some iron, you know? I love meat, but I, so, I also love veggies. Cannot forget the organic peanut butter. Because to make organic album, you must have organic fuel. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's catching on. Let me throw this here. This fruit, it's very popular in Turkey. It's called hurma. People, when they have holidays like Ramadan, they actually eat it. This is the first thing they eat before they break their promise, apparently. And then uh, I'm surprised that I found it here. I'm not actually surprised, it's actually cold that fruits. It's not really sweet, but it gets you. Even though, I play bass and we go crazy on stage. I still like my bell pepper. I don't eat bread, so that's kind of my bread thing. And then let me show you what John got himself. So, let me give you a story. Yogurt comes, uh, it's Turkish. The word is Turkish, it's made in Turkey. And then it's the only food, if you want to say it, it's still the, they never change the name in every language, it's still exactly the same. I think uh, you can put like one or different alphabets, but it's still yogurt like that. And he likes the yogurt more than I do. It's kind of ironic. <laughs> <laughs> I love making breakfast. So in our future tour, hopefully long tours, we can do breakfast on our tour bus. Very rarely would not do it because he knew if he if, if he makes it he knows that it will be improved. On my way song in the middle. Uh, maybe, maybe it's yeah the clean part. This part? Yeah, the, the basic playing and the guitar mm -hmm. is playing. Yeah, I'm always standing. The last note, which for you is C. Yeah, that's the last note. I yes. will not make it long, I will make it short. Do, do, da. Short. Not do, 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 but do, do, da. Yes. So and I will also make the last note with guitar like that. And you will understand when you play it like that. Not, not many notes you play together. Yeah, you play your own thing, you play your own thing, but uh, neither of you did uh, pay attention to what the other guy was playing. So you need to kind of, while you are playing, you need to concentrate on the other guy as well. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like having sex, but alone. Alone, but you're the nice one. and then it con it's continuing. And in this song, the ending was very good because now it was strict and we like when things are strict. It's tricky. On the blast beat, uh, blast beat part, uh, you need to relax. Because your guitar was way too fast, and especially blast beat can be difficult if you listen to drums as a whole. But it should not be. What helps you, as I wrote on, on my blog, is when you play, especially the blast beat, uh, because the snare is on off beat and it's like bum, 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 bum. it's difficult to catch. So what you need to do always when you're playing metal, it doesn't matter what style you play, it doesn't matter uh, what the tempo of the song is. You need to sway, and this. Usually when, when I tell, it feels very stupid, like, what, I need to move. And when you are singing, if you are not doing like this, I'm not recording. Because you need to 
kind of this will lock you in with the drums. When you sing, you need to do like this. And when you play bass, you need to do like this. When you play guitar, you need to do like this. And when you're doing the blast beat, you need to find the first beat, which is the bass drum, and uh, sing. Uh, roll like this. When it's and kind of sway to the music. Find the first beat. And all, never like <laughs> like this, not too fast. It's always the kind of relaxed swaying which will help you. And eventually, you will kind of this will happen and you will melt the groove wise with tonic. Maybe also some other levels too, and so on, but we will find out later. But, uh, the po point for this is kind of uh, when you play too fast, you need to relax, and what helps is to uh, play the bad plus beat. And find the big note. Exactly, the big note. That's only can be achieved by swaying. Fun to send the maniac to catch a maniac. I don't know if a necklace would fit me. Oh yeah, it will fit. It will fit everybody. I don't know, maybe if I can find a uh, nice Scandinavian necklace here. <laughs> <laughs> Who am I supposed to trust? Just trust the cat, that's all you need to know. Just trust the cat. Trust what I say. Tell us your dream that you saw last night. Oh, so I had this dream that me and Austin went to the grocery store and I remember Austin telling telling me that he wasn't feeling so good. It's, and the reason behind that was because he drank 50 energy drinks, not even the sugar-free kind. And I was trying to tell him, it's awesome, it's because he drank those energy drinks. And I don't remember exactly what you said to me, but you got mad at me and you were saying basically I was full of crap. And I remember when you got out of the bathroom when you said that, I remember picking you up like a rag doll and like slamming you on the ground and then as I was doing that, you t literally went turned into a human to a ragdoll. I think I killed you while you were a ragdoll. That was a funny trip. What are your thoughts about this dream, Austin? Tell us. Well, John often complains that uh, I don't listen to him, so this could be some <laughs> inner frustration. <laughs> We should address this before he tries to kill me. Honestly, I think, I think that's what it is. Because like, I do say to him, you never trust the cat. You never trust me. So, John, do you think this dream is a sign? I think it's a sign that Austin starts trusting me more. I'm going to kill him eventually. Does it hurt your feelings when he doesn't listen to you? A little bit. How can you kill someone with that pretty face? Look at it. Look at that face right there. Italian, I'm from California. Yes, California. No, stop. California. Okay. I'm from California. Mm -mm, mm -mm. California. <laughs> Every day I show type of song. California. I'm from California. <laughs> Thanks for opening the door, jerk. <laughs> You're from California. Let me there. I lost, like I became a child again, like oh, yeah. 16 years old, me, and then he told me yeah, Alexia was here and Insefirum too. Insefirum was here, I just, Northern had a private show in this room, and then, uh, you know, like your hands are shaking because <laughs> those bands are one of the reasons that you started to do that the music style. It's not, a one, it's not only metal, music style, it's the life become, like metal become our lives after some point. Joo, nyt, nyt se oli hyvä. Joo, kannattaa ehdottomasti pitää tiukalla. Niin sille, kun se oli siellä ihan lopussa vasta lähti kuulumaan, alussa tämä ei oikein erottunut, niin se voi olla tosi tiukalla siinä. The heartbeat of our album.
for the past two years I've been recording analog only. I no longer record on computer. And why is that, you might ask? Well, people kind of have gone the digital path. I went the digital path. 15 years of my life I was only recording on computer. Eight years I had the digital mixing console and all that time I was wondering what's wrong? Why, why, why music doesn't feel right? Why, why something's missing? And the first time I switched the speaker system not listening the output of sound card but started listening before the sound card that blew my mind and I was like whoa this much uh, information is lost during the conversion AD conversion and DA conversion and that information is not returned on the DA conversion when you come back from digital to analog so then I started experimenting recording the same take on both computer and on tape and I was blown away every single band who I was recording was blown away like they couldn't believe how much information is lost so I only do tape sessions nowadays and it's kind of like this mixing console there's a plugin for it uh, every tape machine I have 16 tape machines there's a plugin for each of them but it's kind of like if you've ever ridden a horse or a Harley Davidson they've been simulated very nicely on the PlayStation game but I don't know uh, there's something that feels a little bit different when you ride a horse. You can also ride it on PlayStation, but there's, there are some differences. Did you know that the woman has been simulated? There's a blowable rubber doll, but uh, there still are some men who prefer an analog woman, if you know what I mean. terrible musicians we are <laughs> and then <laughs> say how we were playing too fast like because you know the practice days we felt pretty good like yeah. we were pretty focused and we were trying to you know give it our best and I think it was the first day he told us like he came into the room and he says well I can already tell you is you play too fast <laughs> oh, yeah. and I'm just like oh what yeah what do you mean playing too fast that was basically the biggest thing we had to work on it was our right hands Exactly, because it sounds like it. And exactly as it should be, but we have the big low end. Wow. So, uh, any changes? Because guitar sound is not final sound. I can hear right, it. Yeah. As <clears throat> quiet as possible, they are not kind of... Uh, but the, we are not talking about guitar. Guitars are pilot and it's huge opportunity for you to rehearse and find the calmness to the playing. Right. right. Because the faster you play, the album won't be finished yeah, faster. I, I could hear the parts rush, and I think you and I both looked at each other. So I'm, I'm at least glad I'm hearing it. It'd be exactly. different if I wasn't hearing words fast. Um, then there would be uh, then we'd have a problem. Yeah. But now, as, as you can hear it, that's exactly as it should be, and uh, it's nothing to feel bad about. Right. The total opposite, because now you hear it and you know what to do. You need to be more calm and more kind of steady with the rhythm. Normally, if you would go to any studio in the United States for computer recording, especially with engineers, nowadays they would say, Oh, this bass track is done. Very good. I will do some editing. No, editing will not help and it needs to be played correctly. Even when I was recording on a computer, we recorded until it was correct without editing because editing kills what is there. It can only connect when you connect kind of mentally with the drums. Simple as that, but highly difficult to execute. Yeah. Uh, everything I ever recorded was a lie. Should we kill ourselves? Not yet. I'm really glad we went with the session drummer Tony Poninen. Uh, he was recommended by Otzi because they've worked together a lot in the past. He made the process really easy, saved us a lot of time. 
I'm glad one of us was ready for Aussie standards. This time I knew that we are going to record the album on take and I'm probably going to have to record every song on one go to take so there really was no room for mistakes or wasting time or anything. Now I think that's it. It sounds great. Just recorded two songs. What are your thoughts? How do you feel about this, Austin? Yeah, we got the intro, we got Never To Return and Succubus. The drums sound huge. I'm very relieved every time we nail one because uh, it's really difficult to get it in one take, but uh, it's uh, coming together and I'm very excited to hear everything when it's finished. All right, people. Hi, hi, how you doing? Today is the second day of the recording. The date is January. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Whoa! Plow down by that. We'll try not to get killed by uh, snow flowers. We're going to market because this motherfucker is keep eating food all the time, like six times a day. And then, oh, look at the snow. Okay, we need to go to the other side. But for some reason today it looks cold, but it doesn't feel that cold like the two, three days ago. Maybe we're just used to it now. And then we recorded uh, four drum tracks, four and a half. Today we're gonna try to do the other five. And uh, we've, uh, we, pr we played at least like eight hours yesterday. But today hopefully we can finish the tra tracks like half a day, man. <laughs> so and then... Uh, plan, and also, let me turn the camera to our faces so you can see us. Here you go. This is the perfect... Uh, Look at this beautiful face. Okay, people. We're gonna go to a supermarket now. Apparently it's illegal to take video shoots on supermarket. Even though I'm... Uh, I have some things against illegal stuff. I'm not gonna do it. They might just send me to Middle East jail here. <laughs> or Russia. That's worse. Probably put you in Russia. It's a, it's a lot closer. Put and you up put the in Gulag. And then I'm not trying to be an asshole to Russian friends. I like you guys, you guys are badass. On the future, we're probably we're gonna play in Russia. I don't really want to. And then, Matt alone. What are your thoughts so far? Sounds great. No, no questions. It's gonna be a killer album. <laughs> you see, he's got penis for microphone. <laughs> <laughs> 
So did they even have gold in Finland? Is that what it is? No, that, I think that's Latvia. Who is that? Teras Breton, it's Finnish metal, like Manoa. There's room for you guys, my problem. What'd you get there, Huston? Well, just, uh, I don't know what you put the banana. Adding some rotten bananas in, to this rotten cereal. That's very soggy. If you want to watch me... What are your tots? Hmm. This is a very bad decision. <laughs> <laughs> Working with the band was seamless. Such a great guys and easy to work with. They were also very open to my ideas. But sometimes they just wanted that damn blast beer. But that's what they got. Machine gun Tony. I told the guys early on that this is your album, not mine. And I'm here only to help you to achieve the kind of album you want. I feel it's my job to bring up ideas, but the artist always makes the final decision. You really are happy with it. I am. Yeah, I mean, I'm trusting you too because I don't know a whole lot about drums. But, yeah. uh, I if think it sounded it's good. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I always knew I wasn't a good bass player, but now his standards, I feel like a beginner. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I should just play punk music. It's become a life music lesson than the recording and album. Ansi is making us all an inferior in some small way. But he's Think about the next time you're gonna play, play live. Like I said, uh, first couple of months, two or three months, it will sound horrible. Everything will sound horrible. Not only your playing, but like when you go see your friends play live and everything. But after a while, once your playing kind of catches up, everyone else will sound horrible and you will start sounding very good. Yes. Your metal, right? Yeah. So we need more, more hard <laughs> touch. Uh, All right, man. Just time to play heavy. I, I got it. Let's adjust the... And we're gonna start with intro, but this song is longer, so I don't need to run all the time. So okay. It sounds different compared to how he did it. He does something that gives it that grit. <laughs> he was the first engineer that ever told me, don't do tremolos, just do root notes. And I never done that before in my life. If you do vibrato, be very careful not to. songs with Borum and any band we do like, for example. You can hear the difference. It's much better compared to... small movement if you use the energy. Can you feel the difference? Yes. Can you hear the difference? Yeah. Because now it became like <coughs> like the albums we've been listening. Oh yeah, there's a big difference now. I, I didn't touch any buttons. I didn't do any anything from my equipment. You did it. Awesome. It comes from your touch. With all this change in sound. Nice. And that's how it should be. Because I, I can't... <coughs> and, and that really affects it too. That uh, I feel like in the vibration to, to my hand. Exactly. <laughs> He had the ear that you could not believe, you know, like he could hear if you were off by a 32nd or a 64th note. Yeah, that was and scary. But the majority of most musicians nowadays don't have that. For one, because he records analog, so there's nothing visual, like say if you recorded digital, you can probably see those mistakes that he was hearing on screen. But it's, he wasn't using that, he was all in his ear, and that was just like incredible. Let's record again. We will record until uh, I tell you it's good. So all you now need to do is repeat that maybe one time, maybe 20 times. We don't know. Okay. So uh, I will not say anything, so I will not distract your uh, concentration. So 
every single take you give me your best shot with the best groove, best touch and soon it will be ready. Okay. Earlier I was giving lots of instructions all the time and it only distracts the mind. I've learned that it's better just to stay silent. So saying when you are playing we will not be telling you all the time that this note, this note, this note. No, it will kind of will keep you from wrong things. I'm recording and then uh, Ansi's, Ansi's like so nice, like he's like saying, all right, good take, do it again. And then like, <laughs> like Let, let's like, that's a good take, let's go again. <laughs> go again. And like he gets like so quiet and so nice. Never would tell you if you would nail it, he just kept telling you to play it over until it was yeah. right, essentially. Very tightly, uh, ta, 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 because now sometimes there is ta, 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 there's the, when you stop the note, the harmonic is kind of ringing, so you need to make sure that the stops are exactly correct. When you skip strings, when you go on a uh, higher string and then you go to the lower string, you need to mute the previous string always. Now we had some two strings uh, ringing at the simultaneously. Small, small things. Otherwise it was rhythmically very good. Okay. If it wasn't for the two notes ringing at the same time, I would have kept that as a kind of album take. That was really good, yeah? Yeah. yeah. But then, uh, then again, as there were kind of these two notes going kind of it, bleeding together yeah and yeah. It, it will affect the guitar and all the melodies and kind of create some wrong harmonics there and always before you start playing make sure everything is silent not to make any <laughs> noises keep the volume off and then open it just before handful of notes too early now the simultaneous ringing of two strings was much much better compared to previous but they record it until it's good every note counts and I highly recommend to move like this kind of to catch the groove. Once you understand that you are swaying to drums, it will help your playing as well. It feels stupid, but it really works. First note was too, hit too hard, so it was uh, detuned. I hear a lot. <laughs> Much better, still few very small things which we need to have even better. Because if we would leave that, it would kind of kill the groove a little bit and especially as this is intro it this kind of introduces what it will be so we can't leave bad stuff there this is like this is something else man okay. yeah a roller coaster ride succubus turned out to be my favorite song like in the album i think it's my favorite song from the eternal requiem history before us it's so emotional so sad and then dark it's like me like smiling like it smiles you the song, but behind the song it's like, hey man, like I'm, I'm fucking dead, you know, like almost like that. So I'm recording Succubus, which is a new song for me. I did 24 takes, <laughs> I, 23 or 24 takes for the same song. A little bit too bad. Staying relaxed. Yeah. When there is something which we don't like, we will let you know. If we stay silent, all is good. Then we just wait for the kind of more connection on our connection on all parts. Okay. No shortcuts. <laughs> it's better to suffer a little bit at studio and then be happy listening to the final result. Other option would be to kind of cut corners in studio and get things done easy and fast. Then you go home, you will be like, oh, these small mistakes, they're all there. <laughs> Just like I'm walking in the darkness, man. It's so scary when there's no metronome there. No need to be so worried. So we practiced for nothing all these years in metronome? Like recorded for nothing in but metronome? Tony is, is the metronome. So rehearsing with metronome helps when you play with drums but those are the special parts but the special parts will connect exactly once you get kind of uh, you, you don't worry and you don't think the more you worry the worse the playing will get so <laughs> it's it's internal processing that's it's the whole whole thing it's oh, problematic only if you allow it to be but if you 
don't give a damn, then it's going to be very cool. Mm -hmm. A little bit of punk rock attitude. No worries, no care. It's you do your best, I do my best. It can't be any better. It's the best. <laughs> I think you need to learn how to walk in the darkness. All these years I always liked darkness. That's literally the only thing that I care about. I just don't share that anymore in anyone else in my life. <laughs> That's why I don't like light so much. This is the first time I feel like I'm like really lost though. When people come here, they are like here. And then when the reality hits, they kind of fall. The uh, higher you are, the uh, higher you're gonna fall. But then again, feeling bad doesn't help the situation. The only thing that helps is to kind of empty mind, stay relaxed, no worries, you do your best. I think this is the longest I ever done bass tracking oh, in my life. Even long. Long would be to spend the whole day recording this one song based there. That would be long. I can't even imagine, man. I'd probably lose my mind. 16 hours straight, no pause. Maybe a little bit lunch. Have you ever done that? Yeah, many times. For years. One song. Years, years. Holy oh, shit, man. Last time I recorded an EP, it took me two hours for four song. That's crazy. And this is called development. But the biggest goal is when people hear your music, this album, they will be immediately kind of, uh, they start moving because it, it, uh, they can't resist the groove mm -hmm. and it can't be created artificially, it can't be done using any trickery, it, it must be always done like the honest way, like you, you need to play, you need to lock into drums, you need to lock with the, with the guitar, you need to lock with the guitar and then that combined will kind of create this irresistible uh, music which you want to kind of even you can't resist but you, you can't do anything but move that's why I find it very cool so nothing to worry about and I can guarantee the last songs for the album will be a lot easier the only reason I got angry to myself is just I was like telling them the same thing it's not because I cannot do it it's just a time issue yeah but I guess like working with you is kind of like relief us as you might have noticed uh, there are no clocks in the studio. Yeah, I realized because that. No. <laughs> if, there, if there would be one, everyone would all the time be looking at it mm -hmm. and kind of feeling the pressure, but uh, it, it definitely won't help. <laughs> but I have more confidence now. Yeah. And more the confidence grows, the better the result will be. Mm -hmm. If you think, I can't do this, then you definitely can't. It's the mind is so powerful tool. You need to kind of think that this is easy, this is fun, I, I can easily do it. And yeah, if it happens that you can't, then you just have to kind of convince yourself that one more take, no problem. And it's, we will be recording until it's good. This is a huge learning experience and it definitely is. And it, you should always kind of only take it in the positive way because then you know what you need to pay more attention to, you, need, you know what you need to focus and how to become a better musician. Yeah, I'm giving you all the, all the tools to that. Then the rest, the rest is up to you, kind of how you, how you will use the tools given. Because he stopped thinking. Yeah, exactly. And that's what we. What, what did Tony say? Tony said it's about capturing the moment. This was the moment worth capturing. What do you mean, sound completed? I didn't even finish the most of the part yet, man. You have earned. <laughs> so I don't want to say anymore. And <laughs> naturally, we will listen to the whole song. But my point is. You don't want to hear the song ever again, but we must, and you will. And the point for that is, we've all heard the small mistakes earlier. But let's see if there are any at the moment. Please press play. It was one note here, one note there, which was correct. And then it was kind of like, close but no cigar. Now we have a pack of cigars. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds great. I didn't even know I was finished. Yeah. It feels different. 
it was challenging. I almost cried actually. I never felt like that before in the recording. And uh, since we don't have the metronome, at first there are some parts that I, I need to play by myself. There's only bass. And then uh, you feel like you're walking in the dark, there's no light, you know. Tempo is changing. Were you about to give up? Uh, not give up, but I don't know how to get angry. So I was trying to find an emotion that will help me, I guess. And then uh, somehow we did it. All right, everybody. This is the first guitar track day, which is very exciting. How are you feeling, Austin? Are you gonna nail it or what? Not gonna have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> Go and reach your destiny, brother. And she's gonna help you along the way. <laughs> I wanted to ask John which songs uh, make him the nervous the most for Ansi's uh, standards. Probably Never to Return. There's a lot of rhythmic stuff in the right hand that it's easy to get sloppy on by Ansi's standards. So I gotta be very mindful that I'm constantly in the groove. The Can other you two show us the sample of the Never to Return again, the part that actually scares you? Uh, most, so we can show to the people? Mostly, and it's not because the riff is hard, but the drums, you gotta really be paying attention to the drums. Oh, are you feeling? Shit, make a hand Maybe keep it there. And the chair you are using is called the Throne of Suffering. Quite many people have sat there. I felt like I suffered a lot. Not all have survived. What do you think? Sounds good. <laughs> Sounds decent. Okay. Pretty okay. I, I'm just... I'm still trying to process everything. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap. It sounds good. <laughs> yeah, I okay, finally got it. Yeah. This is, this is why all the hard work is needed, because no plugin can create it, no editing can create it, only you can create that what we just listened. Yeah. You played every single note. None of that has been uh, kind of edited or kind of done any trickery. That's the genuine stuff. It doesn't get much more real than this. I shit you not, at one point I was crying. <laughs> Yeah. I'm not even like I started to get teary. I was like, I don't. It wasn't because it was hard. I don't know why. But yeah. It just happened. I was like, you gotta be kidding me, man. Yeah. And this was fast. Consider, consider of Purim, ten songs, seventy-two days, sixteen hours a day. <laughs> Guys were suffering, but then again, it turned out pretty fruitful. On every session, we need to set a threshold, and uh, we would spend forever only on this song with these guitars if we want it but then again uh, we have a schedule and right. we have to kind of do a certain amount of stuff in a certain amount of time so this uh, is uh, totally acceptable I, I think it couldn't be any any better especially considering the schedule Austin just uh, finished recording the rhythm guitars on our track called Never to Return Again uh, how was it? it's uh, pretty long Extensive. You think it was challenging? Yeah, I think the challenge is just not knowing if it's right or not. But in the end, you did it. Yeah. Austin just finished recording the lead on our hit song. I'm not gonna share which song it is, but <laughs> you guys hear it soon. Uh, how do you feel, man? It was great. Thank you. I uh, feel especially good to have it Alexander is. Copula's sock Here on my go. guitar. Did it, did his socks give you the power? Yeah. Na nice. I don't even know how many takes it was at this point. Um, so many. Yeah, it was too many. And I just remember after going again, he's like, all right, let's go again. I remember just and thinking I was like really nailing it. I remember just looking at my guitar and then I just, like, there's like a tear yeah. that went down my, my cheek. I mean, it was that. Emotionally stressful. Now put your fingers like this, <laughs> then place them on your on the top of your head. This will open all the muscles from this area because singing it's not magic. It's about kind of uh, uh, physics. And next, don't keep your feet like that, but put them a little bit like loose, kind of uh, both 
knees you need to bend a little forward. Yeah, like yeah. that. Not to keep them locked in the back, but a little bit like this. Yeah. And try singing that without pushing. Strike it with much malice and delight. That kind of opens your muscles and you can sing higher. Okay. Very simple. But promise me you don't use that on stage. Sure. And also you need to have more facial expression. No, it's like this, but we don't want this. We want this, we want this. We do not want this. So, you're gonna go to vocal booth, please. Okay. Try to make it as much as like this. And as little as like this. The opera, no, but more like the kind of throat voice and with the facial expression. Then okay. Sure. Auntie always teaching us something. <laughs> Yesterday, Pringles. <laughs> what is tonight? Ice cream? <laughs> As uh, I'm a demanding man, I want you to deliver more emotion. You must mean every word you say. Yes. Alright guys, we just uh, finished recording the vocals for the first track in the album. Uh, how do you feel, Austin? Nancy uh, got me to give it my best, and I was pretty happy with the outcome, especially once he put on the reverb plate from the 1950s. Uh, really sounded pretty nice. And then Samir had an idea for a harmony that really sounded good. Nancy started uh, developing that idea, and it came out really awesome. Awesome. And then uh, this song is a dark song, we all know now. And then uh, can you give the people that idea of the song what is it but what is it about nothing no, no. today was a long day we recorded a lot of guitars and then uh, we finished recording the vocals for the first time and after we came here we just had to get some dinner while I was cooking John said he needs to get his beer because he's an alcoholic <laughs> It's got <laughs> <laughs> he's got he's got a bunch of uh, Soviet Russia flag looking beer, but it says Barcelona. I think it's Spanish. I don't know yet. I don't know what it is. And then uh, the black this, one's Finnish. This is the Finnish. It's called Karhu. There's a bear on him. And then uh, this is his dinner tonight: yogurt with the Turkish looking man, and then okay. some yeah. chicken. If you want to do the face, this is a little easy. <laughs> is it? <laughs> and then he's eating pickle. As you see. That's not a pickle. And then coleslaw. It's a Finnish coleslaw. Jump on a beer that has a picture of bear. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the bear has the beard. That's so a beer. Karu. Literally just means beer. Ah, you fish. can see it, yeah. The, there's a bear has a beer. Which drinks beer. It's genius. Today was a hard day. Ansi is a challenger record engineer. But it's an amazing experience to work with him. He's really helpful. And then Austin uh, nailed amazing vocals today. Which gave us uh, goosebumps. And I believe there's a section in the song that, that I believe it's gonna make people feel things. Lots of things. <laughs> Do you think people are going to feel things, Austin? <laughs> <laughs> As you see, Austin doesn't like to talk much. Sometimes he just saves his voice for the stage or the studio. Uh, I'm really excited. I think we all are for the vocals. And then we're going to try to shoot another vocals tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow is our last day of studio for this week. Sunday, uh, hopefully, we are gonna jump in the snow together. <laughs> <laughs> snow angel. Or we can search for some bear who likes to drink beer. Stupid. Don't forget to put some emotions in there. So much emotion. So much. And as Ansi said, 
That is the facial, <laughs> facial expression, man. It's Come gonna, on. It's going to be so much facial Come expression on. in this dough. Give us the James Hetfield face while we're making the pizza. Come on. What is James Hetfield's face? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do that. Do Dave Mustaine. He yeah, has, Dave Mustaine's he has like, none. He'll be like that or something <laughs> like that. Today's Sunday. Uh, today is our off day, apparently. And then we're going to do some homemade pizza. And uh, not us, actually. It's just John. Thanks to Menden today. The snow, it's incredible. You lose your leg. And then, uh, look at John, Austin. Austin was doing some uh, rock, rocky running. It was so awesome to watch. And I look at him, he's got legs. And you know, so I'll tease him. <laughs> All right, let's keep this going. Run with me, people. <laughs> Come on, bring it on. Bring it on, baby. Yeah! Yeah! Yeah, boy! It's all awesome to run in the snow. It's cool. Rice Pie. Rice Pie is our album title, Rice. Uh, John is gonna try them with some butter and the cheese on the top. And then he's gonna rise it up. Oh, yeah. All right, John, are you gonna put any cheese on the top or? I kinda wanna try it as is so I can get the most How about you, pure flavor. you take like a little bite just by itself and then put some cheese in it and so we can do A, B, and B. A B comparison. Yeah. Okay. Go. First impression. Oh. Pretty good. Next few days is gonna be badass. One week left for creating the rice. I wanna try the most pure way possible. I never had to do this by hand. I always had a machine to do it. This is the analog pizza. Blood. What are you making there? Blood pizza. Yeah, oh. You're spilling the blood. <laughs> Gotta spread the blood. Oh, uh, yeah. And then, John, you need some oregano. Organic, also. naturally. think you nailed it and then he would just tell you oh one more time he, he would have you do it over and over and over and until you can hear that it just it feels like torture it really does but you know you just have to trust him you just have to listen to what he's telling you you have to focus and and eventually you get it <laughs> thing I took from Osteo Studio is uh, all the learning, all the lessons. I can hear when something sounds fake and I don't want to go down that path again. I don't want to use fake drums. I don't want to use picture correction. I don't want to drag my parts into the right place. I want to be locked into the groove. I want to write exciting parts. I want to catch people off guard with hooks. I want to put more emotion into my singing. Um, all those lessons are going to impact all the music I make going forward. Austin recorded uh, some acoustic guitar, vocals and solos. It's been very smooth. What do you feel? I'm glad that we are making good progress because I thought we were going to run out of time. But uh, we just have five more guitar solos and one more song of vocals. And that is just keyboard and choir. How do you feel about the guitar so far on the solos? Uh, the solos? I feel good about I One of them was very difficult, but uh, we did about 30 takes and finally got it. So. 
Nice. I think it's good. How about the walkers? Yeah, it's uh, probably as good as I could possibly do right now. You know, I'm human and I have my voice, but uh, I think it's probably as good as it can be. Nice. Just to show you guys that he's actually a human, I'm showing you his face. Musica Spoon. So John is gonna record his last part in the whole album, which is the solo in our song called Succubus. How you feeling, buddy? Are you ready? Mm hmm. Are you gonna nail it? Yeah. I mean, you have not a choice. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not, not too worried about it. We believe in you, man. One of the biggest changes Ansi made as a producer was to the song Never to Return. Uh, since I sing and play guitar, I have been singing and playing on upbeats. And uh, Ansi told me, no, you've got to sing on downbeats. That's the only way that the audience will understand this song. Basically, you know, I had about 30 minutes to record the vocals on each song at the most. So I had to make this change very quickly and I had to trust him that this was the right thing to do. But looking back, it was. Um, and I haven't gone back to the old way of singing that song. We are recording. Sounds angry. Yeah, that's the scream I can do today. Okay, thank you very much. Then sure. this scream is done. Okay. Sounds long enough though. Yeah. yeah. That's what she said again, man. <laughs> I keep yeah. telling it to myself. Get, get out. <laughs> <laughs> so that go to that door right there and get out. That's what she said. Get off the bed. Let's <laughs> listen so, on my way. Sounds angry at balls, man. If there's oh, a yeah. room for keyboards, the very same keyboard was used on the first two children bottle albums. Wow. Nice. It, it even has the Nightwish sticker in the back, which Janne Wierman put there. So you're saying they use this for the lake bottom, the song? Yeah. Something wild? Yeah. Holy oh, shit, man. And on this keyboard is the orchestral hit, which some people might find. Ooh, baby. Oh, yeah. Oh, awesome. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. If we go back to strings. Okay. But if we go back to. Mm -hmm. Fill up the chorus too much with the big uh, kind of uh, chords. That's why I, I would offer a more simple way because there is a lot of stuff going. We have the yeah. uh, 
drums, bass, to a rhythm, guitars, melody, a lead vocals, backing vocals, and then when the keyboard is playing this uh, big even chords, it's kind of... Even low in the mix? Yeah, even if it's low in the mix. So, first thought that came to my mind, yes, I remember, and then I made a <laughs> this, is, this is a classic example why you should not think when you play. Yeah. Because immediately when you think, you fail. It is four in the afternoon. No, it's not. You've been sleeping like one million hours, but look at there's a sun outside, man. Look at that. Look at that. See? Open your eyes, man. I'm coming home. <laughs> Three songs finished and you're still sleeping. What? <laughs> yeah. You listen all the three songs. I'm telling you. What time is it? It's like four o'clock. I don't believe you. What time is it now? It's about four twenty. Yeah, dude. Get the fuck up, man. How can you sleep that long? We went to his burger. We got burgers, and you're still here. <laughs> <laughs> now I know why you have winter sun shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. Kind of hear where the influences cool. are. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, it has a folky feeling in it. Well, yeah. It but in a cool way. <laughs> yeah, that's what we like. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. You're in the right country. <laughs> you should live here. <laughs> if you would play that like to us without us knowing, then we would just say that, okay, it's probably a Finnish band. Yeah, it was a fucking awesome solo. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I like that one. Yeah. I'm glad you like it. Yeah. It should be the hit, yeah. or the single one, if you put something out for the first. Like that's something so. in the like when when the um, where there was like the C part or the harmony with the bass and everything. It reminded me of this band called Rhapsody. That was <laughs> the inspiration. Do you know a band called Sabaton? Yep. Sabaton, yeah. It had like this. Uh, Viking it, uh, manly feeling in, in, in it. <laughs> <laughs> album was recorded on tape, and it was the whole album was done in 12 days. We recorded nine and a half days, completed all eight songs, some 42 plus minutes of music, and I made all the mixing, full analog mixing using the analog mixing equipment in two days for the whole album, and half a day we spent on mastering the album. Uh, including the CD mastering, streaming mastering, and also cutting the tape with a razor to make the vinyl masters. So what is this machine doing exactly? This is where I make the complete, complete the mix. It's a stereo tape machine. And Studer A812. And here are your songs. Here are your songs, here are your songs, and here's one more reel. Wow. And now I'm 
combining kind of taking each song and putting it on the vinyl master, which is quarter inch tape, recording the masters, RTM, SM900 tape. And yeah, now I'm doing the vinyl master. Wow, 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 wow. Sounds like a scratch DJ. <laughs> <laughs> this is organic music. Yeah, as analog as it gets. During our lifetime, digital will not catch up with real stuff. All the time, more and more people are waking up to the fact that during the past decade, how many classic albums has been made? None, I say. Then again, after 100 years, people will be listening The Beatles, Led Zeppelin, Pink Floyd, Jimi Hendrix. If you listen it on Spotify, you have no idea how it really sounds. You need to go analog, you need to go listen it on vinyl, on cassette, not the digital remastered stuff, because that will blow your mind once you understand how much information really is lost. The best way I could describe the difference is when you listen on the vinyl record that's all analog, you know, AAA sparse code, um, is it sounds like a three-dimensional sound. It sounds like you could close your eyes and there's a band playing in front of you. But uh, when you listen on the Spotify digital recording, it sounds like everything's squashed. It sounds like the sound is in the speaker and it never leaves the speaker. Ansi is on a mission to save music, essentially. He, he believes that sound is being lost when it becomes digital. And I believe he's onto something. It's like comparing candlelight to electric light. It's alive. What really stood out about this session was obviously that it was a fully analog recording. And I love that. You don't get to do that too often these days. It kind of sets a totally different mood. It takes the focus from the minor details to how it actually sounds and feels. It also gives us a nice special live feeling when you play in the same room with the other guys and without a click track. I think the new Eternal Requiem album stands out great. It has been managed to capture awesome moments, exactly the kind of capturing the moment type, type of things. And there's an energy, an emotion, which you can feel from the album, even if you listen to MP3 on any streaming service where you can kind of hear the musician and you can feel the emotions. What I love about the album is the liveliness. It kind of, when you listen to the album, it feels like the guys are playing in front of you in your living room, for example. And we didn't use metronome on the album, so the tempos are alive, like on the classic albums, which you maybe listen from 70s, 80s and even 90s. And our goal, or my goal, was to capture the raw, live energy, kind of... Uh, well, same with Journal of Boredom, Hate Crew, Death Row album. Same with these guys. When you listen to the album, you feel like you've just been running, kind of, uh, I don't know, 10 miles as fast as you can. And you, you will be exhausted, and that, that's awesome, I think. There's so many special moments on the album. I think the opening track is great. Never to Return is such a high energy song and the acoustic part of it so far it gets me every time. The whole point of this album, the whole point of the documentary, the whole point of us even going to Finland was to make a dream real. You know, we, we have these dreams for a reason. I hope that anybody who watched this or listened to the album will go on to make their own dreams real. As soon as you make that decision, as soon as you decide you're going to go for it, it will happen. Don't let fear of failure hold you back from reaching your goals. If it doesn't make you excited, don't do it. Like If you ever feel like you want to give up, just remember why you started. And then remember the pain. And then uh, we would like to thank everyone who uh, helped us out on Indiegogo. Yes, thank you so much for that. Love your cats, love your metal. Rise, it's coming. And now it's your turn to rise.